So start by um, telling us about the work that you do and how your path led you to that work. Okay. Um, the work that I do is I am part of a, what they call community-based instruction that technically is 18 to 22 year olds. So that means a student who graduates, they actually don't graduate with a diploma they graduate with a certificate of completion. By law in California, that means that the, you have to educate them until they're 22. Mm. Thus, we have what they call um, transition programs. Mm -hmm. Ours is called CBI, Community-Based Instruction. Also, Compass, I guess, is the official name. They have to have a catchy name, um, but we go by CBI. Um, and we have grown from, <clears throat> I think, three years ago. We had 20 students. We now have 65. It is one of the largest growing segments in education, uh, transition programs. Yeah. Uh, number one, because people are becoming more and more identified with certain disabilities or they didn't do very well in high school, they're not getting a diploma and they're getting a certificate of completion unless they go into a transition program and there's a lot of them out there. Um, <clears throat> not as good as ours, but I mean, there's a lot of them out there. Um, and so how I got there, how many days do we have here? Do we have a lot? No. <laughs> um, uh, and, you know, I was in the restaurant business for a long, long, long time and people go, God, how can you jump there to education and special education? The thing is, in, in restaurants, you learn a lot. You learn about managing people, you learn about communicating with people, you learn dealing with public. I mean, if you're in the restaurant business for any period of time, you have a very wide range of things to do. <clears throat> and a lot of things that you do, do go along with education. Um, I was in charge of a management training program that helped me manage people. Uh, you are talking all the time in public, to the public, as well as employees. So restaurant business is great for education. Um, <clears throat> for all you people out there that are afraid to get up in front of people, going to the restaurant business, you'd be on top of the world. Um, I was working in the restaurants and then my son <clears throat> wasn't born deaf. He went deaf at two. He got a cochlear implant at about two and a half. And I could talk about that for days and I won't, but it allows him to hear. He hears better than I do. Um, which is a plus and a minus because sometimes like uh, we were in the car one day when he first got it and I was singing, there was a song on the radio and uh, he took his ear and he pulled it off because he didn't like the way I was singing. So he didn't have to hear me. So he just pulled it right <laughs> off. So when a deaf child tells you your singing's bad, it's time to quit singing. So that I did that. Um, <clears throat> but I knew sign language. So the school asked me, hey, could you have, you know, come in. So they were paying me to do it. And I was at AHI, assistant to the hearing impaired to a student who was not deaf, but he couldn't talk. So he used sign language. So I would interpret for him, for the, the teacher and the teacher back to him. And then I was doing that, working in a restaurant. Um, that was seven days a week between those two positions. Mm -hmm. um, and then I decided, why don't I get a teaching credential? Okay, why don't we just add more hours on here? So I was going to school, working two jobs, and then I did that for about two years, took me two years to get my credential. Um, and then I became a teacher. I got snatched up right away. Uh, I was doing mod severe um, for the first year, and then this position came open and they said, hey, for uh, three months, can you come do this? And six years later, I'm still here. Um, that's because it's grown so much. Um, it's again, they're identifying more students and the programs are growing as, as, as people need um, more and more services. Um, so I went from restaurants to just being an aide to being a teacher and that's where I am. Uh, our particular program, very good program. It's um, <clears throat> Won a few awards, teachers won a few awards. Um, we're pretty good, <laughs> if I say so myself. A lot of programs out there. Most districts have a transition program, except for if you're in a private school. Um, and they are all, there's some really, 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 really good programs out there, but it's such a growing, growing segment of education right now. It's huge. It's, you just go online and you can see jobs everywhere. So if you want to go into a job, education, if, in fact, if you look for the, if you're looking for the jobs that will be growing in the next 10 years, education's in there. Mm -hmm. 
absolutely, it's, it's, it's especially special education. So mm -hmm. restaurants, aid, teacher. And, <laughs> and this lesson is something when I talk to my students, I say, don't be afraid of change. Look at me, I went from, you know, washing dishes to teaching you. So uh, there's a lot of years in between there, but uh, don't be afraid of change because I made my change at 59 or 58. Uh, you know, going from restaurants to teaching and, you know, age is one of those things you don't worry about it. and don't be afraid of change because people go, God, aren't you scared? And I said, not really, um, because I wasn't, I don't know. Yeah. I, That's I, how I got here. I made the transition from restaurants too. And it was, it was definitely challenging because pe people do have this stigma of like, well, you can only do restaurants, but I'm so glad, you know, to have switched into HR. And of course, then I did HR for restaurants. So there's some similarities there. But, but you do get a part of HR, especially, you know, for the company yeah. you work for. Um, HR is a big thing. Um, so you were, you talk to HR all the time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, you had, you get kind of an inkling of what you're going to do. Uh, same thing with going from restaurants to education. You're still dealing with people. You're still dealing with the public. It's just a different, you just have to, it's just a little bit different, but the basic process and protocols are all there. Socialization, um, the dealing with parents, which is the funnest part of my job. Um, and, uh, you know, just interacting with people. Yeah. Restaurant business is good for almost any job you can get, I would say. So you always want to work, work at McDonald's first, I guess. Um, <laughs> Perfect. Well, when we're talking about disability and the, the students that you're working with, I mean, I think disability is such an encompassing word and can mean so many different things. So in particular, what does that look like with the adults that you work with? Okay, so you have to realize that when people talk about disabilities, there's cognitive disabilities, physical disabilities. By the time I get a student, they have to be 18 to be in the program. Well, they fledged that a couple times. Um, they've been diagnosed and they've been diagnosed 18 years ago or 16 or 17 years ago. Um, actually more like 15 or 14 years ago. So when there were two or three, they were diagnosed. Um, and those diagnoses uh, usually uh, stick all the way till they become adults. So by the time I get a student, they've been through <clears throat> special education or what we call the system for a good 14, 15, 16 years. Um, I have students that are pre-K, pre-kindergarten, and I have students that are uh, pre-algebra. So the people that are pre-algebra, you say, God, why are they there? There are social issues also. So when you have cognitive understanding, uh, sometimes you have some social issues too. So you have physical issues, cognitive issues, social issues. Uh, are they big issues in some cases? Uh, yeah, but I would say, to be honest with you, 90% of the students, and as I said, we've gone from 20 to 65 students. We have four classes now, before we had two. Um, we have 16 to 17 students per class. Within that class, you may have a couple of students that have one on ones that are there to work with just them. Um, that's not that's that's uh, the exception, not the rule. Um, and so when you're dealing with those that many students and not that many, but it doesn't sound like it's that many. But when you're dealing with students that have different opportunities and you have 16 different opportunities, then it becomes a little um, <clears throat> It's, it's challenging, but it's very, 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 very rewarding. So when you talk about disabilities, the range is wide. Um, <clears throat> the extent is different. There's different degrees. Um, as I was about to say, uh, I would say 90% of the students that I have are definitely employable. Mm -hmm. Right now I have two students that are working at, can I say a company name? Yeah. Okay, uh, Ace Hardware, which has been uh, really good to us. Uh, it's not just through us, and I will probably get this in later on. Um, hopefully, I'll ask this qu a question that pertains to this is we are, there's three different levels. There's us, the public school, there's the county, which is the regional center, and then Department of Rehab, which is the state. So between us three, we work together and support the students. So, but I have two students who are working right now at Ace. I have two more. They're going to go back into Ace. 
And so they get trained for 100 hours. And if they do a really good job, they get trained another 100. Whoops. I lost you. No, I'm still here. OK. No, I lost you. <laughs> um, and they'll get another 100 hours. And they're getting paid uh, minimum wage, which is going up to $15, hopefully, um, <clears throat> on Thursday. Um, and so they're making money, getting trained, building on their resume, and we'll get into resume building, I'm sure, somewhere else. But when you talk about disabilities, wide range, a lot more diagnosis now of what disabilities are. Plus, there are disabilities that are being identified now that weren't there a year ago. Sure. Yeah. Thank you for explaining that. Um, the other thing that I think often happens when people think about disabilities or interacting with someone with a disability is they have a fear of doing the wrong thing, saying the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. What resources would you recommend that people look into to educate themselves about the appropriate ways to interact with people with disabilities? Um, that is a lot of, not a lot of my job. It's part of my job. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna use my son here as an example because he's, uh, a lot of students with this, some students with disabilities don't have what we call a filter. Um, and they, we constantly, constantly, everything we do is heavily scaffold so that we bring out the best of the student and we tell them this is what you, sh you should be doing when you are interacting with other people now. And then we practice that all the time. Mm -hmm. Now with the online, the virtual, pluses here of being online is you have 16 people in front of you and they are interacting with 16 people all at once mm -hmm. in a classroom it's different it's more one-on-one -on -one. <clears throat> so that socialization is very big that's good virtually but you have to have physical socialization in order to really 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 teach that um as i've said 90 percent of the students i say are employable and that's because they are socially very, very adept at what they're doing. They want to be out there as much as anybody wants them to be out there and they will do anything to make sure that it works. And they will, my students are honest, ethical, hardworking, they're the best, they're great. They're the ones I have right now are great. I've never had really, I've had some students that are tough, um, but I've had really, I've been very fortunate. Uh, some great students and the programs had some great students. <clears throat> awesome. And then what would you say are some of the daily challenges that your students face relating to their disabilities? I think especially, you know, in the workplace, but just in general as well. Um, the daily challenges are this overall feeling, well, it's, I don't know if it's daily, it, it, it's the, it's the foundation sometimes of, um, I don't want to, I could talk about this for about a day. Um, parents have this thing and, and parents are 50% of the whole thing. You know, there's the school, we cannot do everything. Uh, the parents are part of this whole thing and that you try to work with the parents, um, bringing them in, you know, what goes on at school also goes on at home, especially when you're talking about what we were just talking about, socialization, interacting, that sort of thing. Parents come into different categories um, overall. I would say a good percentage of our parents think that their student is broken somehow. Mm. So there's this feeling that me or a teacher is going to fix all that. First mm. of all, they're not broken, so there's nothing to fix. Mm. Uh, we bring out the best in them and we teach them, we mentor them, we show them, uh, we order the example of what it's gonna be like when they get out in, the community and that's why it's called community-based instruction um some of the things we do do and i as i said i could talk about this for days um we have computer labs we have we go on shopping sprees not shopping sprees but shopping for food then we cook the food um we go out in the community a lot we have job sites um i could name companies right uh <laughs> round table pizza walgreens we work with the city of antioch uh pet smart um <clears throat> God, i'm missing somebody here oh subway we also do subway uh we have developed because i got out of the box here 
jobs on campus and then a department of rehab will pay the students to train on campus. And so they're getting all, all these different interactions here. Um, sometimes it's only for an hour a day. And sometimes when you have 100 hours, they're working six and seven hours a day. So you have those two things. So um, you have to really, really incorporate the parents into it. And you have to look at in the classroom how it is best for this student to become successful. Um, the challenges are having the parents buy into it. By the time we get a student, and I said being in the system for 14, 15, 16 years, is you are no longer reading um, To Kill a Mockingbird. Now you're reading job requirements, or you're reading about a job, or you're reading um, how to write a resume or something like that. Mm -hmm. So when you speak, talk English, like an English class, it's completely different. Yeah. You're going from academic school school to uh, academic, you know, life skills. Um, and it's completely different. And the, the people, uh, some students have a hard time jumping from school to um, transition programs. And again, you have to get the parents in there uh, on a day to day basis. The challenges are keeping students focused keeping them with that goal in mind because time sometimes is, is difficult to, where do you want to be in a year? Where do you want to be in five years? Um, and you get the goals and you have students develop goals and they'll say, I want to live by myself. Okay, what's that going to entail? That's going to entail the job. And then we talk about budgets. We talk about, do you want to live by yourself? Do you want to live with a roommate? We actually go into what's rent for one you know, bedroom apartment here in Antioch. Um, and that sort of thing. So everything is very, very scaffold in the classroom to everything we do. Every presentation we give, every event we do is heavily scaffold to get them out into the, into the um, <clears throat> community. Um, getting the community the hardest part on a day-to-day -day basis is getting them out in the community and getting them that self-esteem and confidence to go out there and do it. Mm -hmm. That's the hardest part. Uh, because for 14, 15, 16 years, they've been in special ed. I wish we'd get rid of that term. I don't know what, what term we could come up with. Uh, some of them have been ridden on a bus. Only bus people that take buses these days are the ones that are in special education. So you have this kind of stigma. Mm -hmm. You have to get rid of that. Um, I'm going to use my son as an example. He was fortunate. His high school, or excuse me, his elementary school, middle school and high school with all two blocks of each other. So every student he went to elementary school with, whether it be general ed or special ed, went with him from there to middle school to high school. So the general ed students knew him as well. So we walk around town all the time and people go, oh, there's oh, I know. Um, and that's huge. Um, we have to really get them out there. And that's the biggest challenge on a day-to-day -day basis. Again, uh, big support from the regional center, big support from the department of rehab. I work with them um, very closely. I've been talking to them uh, every week. Uh, part of the problems you're going to see coming going forward is their budgets for this year are based on budgets for last year. We weren't out because of the pandemic. So if they cut that and we come back to school, are we going to have enough money to get them back out in the, in the public? And um, hopefully with the change of administration, that money won't go away, especially for special education. Yeah. Thank you. Um, my next question is about um, employers and what employers can do to make jobs more attractive to people with disabilities or even maybe just more visible. Um, a high percentage of the employers we deal with um, realize a couple of things. And I, First of all, they get a tax break if they hire our students, which is always a plus. Um, we do go, uh, we do have training programs, so we send a trainer with them. Uh, that's usually through workability, which is the county. So one of my aides will go with them and actually works with them. They give us the job, they show us the job, we do the job with our own personal trainer. Department of Rehab, the person at the site actually trains the people so that they can train the person exactly how they want them to do it. 
So they're getting a tax break, uh, their, their salary is getting paid for, um, and you have this person for 100 hours, and if you like them, you can hire them, or if you like them, you can have them for another 100 hours. Um, those are some of the pluses. Plus, after, I would say a majority, a, wide, a large majority of our, our uh, employers see how honest, see how ethical, see how hardworking these students are trying to be, and that's that just sells it right there. The hardest part, get that initial in there. Uh, big companies to do that, uh, I would say Safeway, which is owned by Albertsons, I think, um, hires a lot of hires a lot of uh, students with disabilities. Um, a couple other companies, Ace is helping us out quite a bit. Walgreens is helping us out quite a bit. Um, again, uh, once they get in, once they get their foot in the door, they sell themselves. It's getting that initial. <clears throat> yeah. And that's what the big, the big, you know, as I said, the, we have those three umbrellas. They have us, small umbrella, counties, bigger umbrella. And then you have the state, which is a huge umbrella. And between those three, we can usually talk people into it. <laughs> so you have to, you have to be out in the community a lot. You have to do a lot of selling. And if a company was like reading this or listening to this and said, oh, I'm interested in finding out about that program, how would they get connected? Or if you, um, you could contact me. If you contact either the regional center for mm -hmm. Contra Costa County, because we're in Contra Costa County, um, or the Department of Rehab statewide, uh, my particular office is in Antioch. Uh, they would be loved to, this is what they do. This is their whole function is to do this. Um, and they always come to our program first because we are very, very, very active and we're a pretty good sized program. Um, <clears throat> we also place people pretty fast because we have people that are, we know that can get out there. Um, and the, the support is pretty extensive. Uh, Department of Rehab gives a class once a week uh, online now, usually it was in person to our students and they have to go eight weeks. And after they get through that eight week course, then we get them to an employer. So it's not as if they're walking in this cold because they don't, they aren't. Yeah. We also have an occupational toolkit through the county, which is an self-paced online. Again, you have to complete that to go out into the job market. So there's a lot of prerequisites you have to get done before you get out there. But um, you know, it, it's if you if you either contact me or contact regional center or the Department of Rehab, and they're you know, they're all statewide. There's regional centers in every region or every county, and the Department of Rehab is everywhere. Yes. And then as far as if you have employers maybe that are connecting with people with disabilities outside of this program and they have people going through the interview process, are there any things you can think about with a standard interview process that where maybe employers could accommodate or make it more easy? Uh, depending on the situation, you're going to have to, because a lot of now in HR, and a lot of the laws, especially in California, you have to ask the same questions to the same people every time uh, because you don't want to discriminate. Uh, you want to give somebody a leg up. Um, in some cases, you might want to have somebody from the Department of Rehab or somebody from the Regional Center um, with them in the interview. They may not understand the questions. So you may have to, when you talk about accommodation, you could ask the question. You may have to phrase it a little bit differently. Um, some of the applications now are extremely difficult um, for our students. A lot of them are psychological profiles, which you know some of the companies you have 65 questions you have to answer online, and I'm sure that prints out you know where we used to work um, was red, you know, yellow, green. Um, I'm sure it prints out that way on the other end, and those are tough, tough questions. I mean, they're tough questions. I mean, they're asking the same three or four questions 15 different ways and the phraseology in it and the words they use sometimes are a little bit difficult for our students. So you have to understand that. Um, I think the virtual um, interviews now are great for our students because they seem to be a little bit more comfortable with that. I think sometimes our students get a little bit uncomfortable with being in person unless there's somebody there with them. You have to understand 
you know, I keep on saying this, you know, the first 14, 15 years, they always had people with them to side every step of the way. Uh, we push them a lot harder in the transition program. Oops, I lost myself again. I keep on hitting my thing. Um, we push them a lot harder. We want to get them out there. We got to give them that self-confidence and that self-esteem. And we have to, you know, model that as well as get them out there. And we tell them all the time, you know, you're not going to be succeeding the first time. You may not succeed the first 10 times. That 11th time, boom. So if um, employers can understand that, even if they can just say, hey, this is it. I'm not going to hire you for all full-time or part-time or whatever. But let's try this out. And then you have one of the programs like a regional center or a department rehab pay for their salary. Um, so it's a, you know, it's, it's, um, it's no, it's no sweat off them if they, if they um, try to at least try the student out. Right. Okay. And then you talked a little bit about the companies that your program works with to get students jobs. Are there any particular types of jobs you could list that you think students are looking for? And maybe even. Sorry, there is particular. Oh, I, you, you talked about the types of companies that you're working with and types of jobs mm -hmm. a little bit that students are doing, but are there any other types of jobs that students are looking for that maybe they're hoping to get into, but your program doesn't work with, things like that? Um, other jobs, yeah, there's a lot right now because of um, they would like to learn a trade. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that's coming out right now because the housing shortage everywhere um building and builders are looking for people all the time they're willing to train you and pay you at the same time uh, a lot of our students like to learn some kind of trade um, most of them want to work hard and they want to work in a warehouse situation where they're unloading trucks they're putting stuff away they're putting stuff on hangers they're sizing things they're putting i don't know um security tags on shoes or whatever it is and getting product ready going back out putting it on the shelves you know first in first out type situations if it's food or a product um and then um they because they in general i'm saying in general lack the confidence to deal with the customer one-on-one -on -one. Mm -hmm. they would rather stay behind the scenes and work their way up to the front of the house so they'd like to start in the back of the house work their way up to the front of the house and uh, no matter what the job is. As I said before, a lot of them love to learn a trade. Awesome. Students are very visual. Um, if you show them, let them practice, show them, let them practice, they'll get it down. Well, that's all the questions I have. Do you have anything you wanted to add about? I could <laughs> add so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't wanna take up all your time. Um, the students I work with are, are just a good group of people. Um, you can have, always have some challenges in this. It's an extremely rewarding position if you ever want to get into education. Um, our students are very willing and very hardworking, very honest, very ethical, and really, really want to be out there with everybody else. They just want to be out there. They really, really do. If you ever have any questions, I don't know if you can give them my personal information. Um, I've got a business card right here um, somewhere. Actually, I'll send this to you. I got a business card. Look, <laughs> um, I will send this to you. I'll email this to you. Um, if you have any more questions, uh, then you can just get a hold of me. Um, I do interviews from time to time, not very often, though. Um, <clears throat> we've been in the newspaper, we've been everywhere. So, um, but if you have a chance for to, talk to, interview, give a chance to a student with disabilities, you will not be um, disappointed at all, mm -hmm. at all. That's about it. All right, well, thank you.